Hey guys, Aaron Rajamani here from UA Visuals and I'm excited because today I'm gonna to share with you my favorite drone tips and camera settings to really level up your photography game. Coming up. So these settings can be applied to pretty much all drones in the DJI range from the Sparks right up to the Inspires. I'm gonna take you through each of the settings on the DJI Go app that will really help you get the most out of your image. So first up, camera settings. What you need to do is you need to select the camera icon and where it says image size, select the ratio of four by three. This will give you more pixels to work with and it will utilize the full sensor on your camera. It's usually the standard aspect ratio for photos. Um, if you're taking panoramas, it will stitch way better than a 16 by nine. Now talking about panoramas, if you are rocking out a Mavic Pro, you can actually flip the camera image to portrait. Perfect for creating good panoramas. Now, JPEG versus RAW. Firstly, if you're a hobbyist or a traveler or just someone that just wants to take images on your drone and get it up on your socials, then 100% go with a JPEG. Shooting on JPEG saves space on your SD card. It's compatible with all devices. It's just easy, simple, and you can still manipulate it somewhat on Instagram and Facebook and, and so on anyway. Now, if you are in the photography game and you really wanna get the most out of your image, then you definitely have to shoot RAW. Now, shooting RAW is seven times the size of a normal JPEG. Takes up a crap load of space on your SD card, but it is worth it in the end. Some images you may think is unusable, maybe too dark or too bright, um, can suddenly come to life because you have all this extra information in the back. So next is white balance. It's always best practice to manually set this according to the lighting condition. However, the DJI products are actually really good in metering correct white balance. So if you set it to auto, it can be a good option if, you're not, if you don't wanna worry about it too much. Um, but once again, if you're in the photography game, it's always good to set it to one of the presets that it's given you, either sunny, cloudy, or if you're flying indoors, incandescent or um, fluorescent. Next, we go to the cog wheel. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit histogram on. A histogram will give you an idea if your image is correctly balanced. It basically shows you the color or exposure distribution on your image in a graphical representation. So sometimes it's hard to tell if your image is correctly exposed when there are so many other external factors involved like the type of device you have. Some, most mobile phones are really, really bright and backlit. Um, if you've got a lot of sun and glare happening at the same time, you're, you might not be able to see the image properly on your iPad. So you end up cranking up the, the settings but really the true image is overly exposed. So when experimenting with the camera settings, keep an eye on the graph. If it hits the ceiling, or if it's all bunched up on the left or on the right, then you've got an unbalanced image and it will be really, really difficult to fix later in post-production. So adjust your settings and try and keep the histogram somewhere in the middle of that box. Front LEDs, you can turn this off or on. Um, I recommend you leave it on for your normal shooting. At night, if you're filming or taking photos, you can turn those off to prevent the actual red lights from coming into the lens, from coming into the lens. So overexposure one. Now what this does is it creates these black and white stripes in, a, in the bright parts of your image. Don't get freaked out. It's basically telling you what's overexposed and way too bright that you can't recover later. You might want to have some parts overexposed like clouds and so on. It's not entirely bad, but it's just there to give you a guide. Peaking, what peaking does is it tells you by outlining parts of your image in bright red, which part is in focus and which part isn't. So what you can do is you can rack focus on some drones like a Phantom 4 Pro or your Inspires and you can see which part of your shots are in focus. Autofocus Assistant, I have this off and manual of focus assistant, I have this turned on. So what this does is it zooms into the image to help you see better, but also so you, you're able to tell if it's in focus or not. So next is grid. These are, I set mine to the lines and diagonals. So this is an extremely handy feature. Turn this on, it'll help you with your composition, 
framing your subjects, uh, using rule of thirds, and it will also help you do with your panoramas and 360 degree stitching. So right now that's pretty much everything for the camera settings. We need to go into some more settings at the top right here. Click these three dots and go to the gimbal icon. Now select the just a gimbal roll. Now one thing I hate seeing, I hate seeing is crooked horizons. Horizons are supposed to be straight unless you're flying 65,000 feet in the air, which you will actually see the curvature of the earth, but you're not. So horizons need to be straight. If you're not doing anything in post-production to correct that, then you can fix that as you're in the air. So if you select adjust gimbal roll, it brings up this little box. You can let it rotate right or left if your gimbal is a little bit out when you're in the air. Uh, it's a very, very handy feature. So while you are still on the gimbal icon setting, select advanced settings and enable gimbal tilt limit to 30 degrees. Now this will allow you to move your gimbal higher to capture more of the sky if you want. So at the moment, straight out of the box, the gimbal is locked at 90 degrees. You can't go higher than level, than eye level. If you select this, it will allow you to shoot much more of the sky. Just keep in mind, you will get a little bit of your propellers in the shot maybe, but you can, I guess, always get rid of that in post-production. So next you're going to hit the remote controller icon and we're going to go into remote controller settings. Now, depending on your drone, you can preset some buttons. Select the C1 or C2 button for camera forward or down. This is super handy for getting your camera quickly into position to take a killer bomb shot or if you want to quickly move it back up to see where you are. Now, the other button, I have mine set to toggle the map. This is so I can quickly see where I am in location to maybe a busy road or water or a lake or someone's house. And I, or if I'm in a dangerous position, then I can quickly get it back. Long press action on some drones, you can control um, two different things, but I've selected mine to control the gimbal. This allows you to control the camera by pressing the screen of the iPad instead of using the dial on the controller. Sometimes it's easier to just go and move your finger around and control the camera that way. Or if you prefer, you can still use the, uh, the controller. So there you have it guys, my photography tips and best camera settings to really get the most out of your drone. I hope it's helped. Don't forget to tell your mates and subscribe. I'm out. Peace.